Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Great Wall Hobby. So here we have aircraft kit in 170 second scale and it copies quite a famous one, it's a MiG-29 and we have here a 8 type Fulcrum A912 and in 170 second scale it should be a bit more I would say easy thing to build because not that many maneuvers or not all maneuvers have enough space for a 148 scale kit and here we get a smaller model. Nevertheless it should be quite nicely detailed and some maneuvers even say that they expect uh, the best kit on the market in comparison with all existing alternatives. So obviously I will not be putting it into the drawings or checking the overall precision but it will be interesting to see what is actually included here in this kit and how the overall design is applied here. So first of all I have to note that the box size is surprisingly large for this scale so here is comparison with my hand we have really nice box art and the weight is also noticeable here you can see two marking options we also have some armament here depicted and also some information about the brand and three marking options are depicted here so i'm not sure if there are five of them in total we will check it once we will be um, talking about the assembly manual so I've just opened the box, it's a top loading box, so nothing special I would say. And you can see that all plastic bags are sealed with a paper clip on the top, it was a, a check. So also nothing interesting, we are going to start with plastic sprues here. And in the meantime I can also remind you that you can support us with a small donation. Actually this kit was purchased with your help and your donations. So I would like to say thank you, so if you would like to help us even more, if you would like to review some particular kit, now be sure to click the large red button on our website, it's written donate. It's done via PayPal, so it should be quite uh, quick and safe process, and of course you will be the one defining the amount to be donated to us. So here I will have to open the lenses a bit because it's a dark grey plastic that's why it might be a bit difficult to see what I am showing here but we are starting with the first sprue it's a label B here that's the lower fuselage half and as far as you can see the nose cone is molded as a single piece part that's the uh, best part here I would say that we see it straight away in the kit we also have separate tail wings which are molded as a single piece elements also note that the main wheel wells are pre-molded to this fuselage section but obviously for example the engine nozzles will have to be assembled separately and if I flip it over here you can check these parts uh, from the opposite side obviously it will be um, I would say a bit tricky not to break this thin parts or elements on the parts and note that also we have a nicely preserved fuselage uh, angle I would say or shape so it's a quite important feature for MiG-29 so that's why I'm showing it here next we have a plastic bag with two sprues inside so I will need a second in order to open them maybe I will be lucky to open yeah this paper clip with one click Okay, so first one is the sprue L. So here you can see that we get the, um, well, I think these are actually the tail fins and what we saw before it was the tail wings. So also we get the landing gear wheels, the external fuel tank and external features, they look really nice here. So if I zoom in even closer, you can see what I'm talking about. We have nice recess panel lines. All of these features are quite decent for a 170 second scale and if I flip it over here you can check these parts from the opposite side so it's a one piece element and here you can see also the guiding pins or tabs which will help you with the proper alignment but of course be sure to check it properly to dry fit these parts because um, it's quite important to have the right alignment for such elements. So, by the way, I didn't mention that these landing gear wheels, they are actually assembled out of two halves. So, for this, I would rather recommend to find some aftermarket replacement because these parts are, I would say, quite large 
to be noticeable once you change them or exchange them with a resin or 3D printed out of out the market. And I hope that we will see such addition from Edward. So I think here we can zoom in and now you can see closer this winding gear parts. It means winding gear legs, both the nose one and main ones. We also have parts for the pilot seat. It looks okay for out of the box build, but again, I think we will see some aftermarket for this set which will bring more features and it might be quite important especially if you plan to open the cockpit and here you can take a look from the opposite side. Okay, next we continue with the smaller frame. So here I can see that we have various armament for this aircraft. I guess there will be several loadout options available, so that's why we get a lot of armament options out of the box. So I will show you only one sprue because we have here two small sprues packed together. I guess there is no point to show them all together because they carry the same set of parts. And here you can see that we get the pylons and these pylons look quite decent. They are obviously molded as a single piece parts. So everything what is needed from you is to carefully open these parts and actually install them onto the aircraft. And I think having this in the standard package is really cool because some brands try to, let's say, impose it as an additional accessory, but it is not additional accessory. It's something what we need for the assembly of the aircraft. Next, we continue with the R60 missiles so they are also coming in a double i think you won't need more and each sprue carries parts for two missiles so there are four of them in total in the kit note that the main section comes as a single piece part which is also a great thing here even though it's a 170 second scale some others might say that it's easy to do so but still some brands are uh, molding this element as a two-piece assembly and this is definitely not a cool thing because uh, you will have to join them together and then you will have some seams and gaps here you get everything that's needed and this is a really handy feature next i'm trying to open another plastic bag so here we have the r73 missiles they're also coming in a double set so i will show you only one so that you can see what kind of design was applied for them. Just give me a moment. Okay, but overall idea or approach to the design of this object or subject is pretty much the same as what we saw on the previous missiles. So it means we get a one piece uh, main section with a separate tail uh, wings, tail fins, so it's just a matter of installing them in a proper position, maybe checking the alignment, but I cannot imagine that it will be a difficult task. Next we continue with the missiles R-72R, so those two are a bit larger, and they're also provided in a four pieces, so here you can see them. And again, the overall design is pretty much the same. We also get the external fuel tanks. So these two large halves will have to be combined together with the fuselage, but it's not a difficult thing because inside we get this alignment tabs, which is quite interesting. I was expecting the pins, but instead we get tabs which are a bit more precise maybe. That's why manufacturer decided to go with them. So now we can return back to the aircraft parts. I don't know why this armament spruce were kind of in the middle of the whole package. But we have two sprues for the engine nozzles. Those are actually sprue E. So I will show you only one because they come with the same set of parts because this is a twin engine aircraft obviously so here you can see these parts so engine nozzle elements are molded as a single piece parts and this is a really cool thing in my opinion they look decent for out of the box bonus if we can say it and of course i think we will see also some aftermarket but i can see that here we have also afterburner uh, cage and also ending gear for the nose 
Winding gear wake, it's coming as a single piece part. So the wheel is molded as a single piece element and should make the assembly a bit easier. Next is something what I was not expecting in this kit. Actually, it was not announced in the renderings which I saw, but we get the leather. At first I thought we also get the pilot figurine, but no, there is no pilot figurine, but at least we get the leather for the cockpit and we also get some cockpit parts here, also some parts for the pilot seat. Everything looks really cool and this is quite nice to get this uh, leather for the pilot in the package. So it means that your aircraft won't look empty, especially if you plan to copy the parked position. Next, I'm opening another plastic bag. Here we have quite an interesting situation. So first maybe I will try to open it and then I will show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I removed paper clip. But here we have this plastic bag and air intakes for both sides are actually molded as a single piece parts, which is really great here. So just give me a moment. Okay, so they are coming on this large frame, as you can see, single piece element, as I said. Uh, so it means you won't have to combine the separate panels together, you just get these parts onto the fuselage and you are good to go. Really smart design and it shows what can be achieved with the modern tech. And next we also get another portion of armament. So here we get... I can see the rocket launchers and also some other stuff. So just give me a moment. I will try to take it out. So here we have transfer beam and BD3 USK. I will zoom in so that you can see what I'm talking about. So this sprue comes in a pair and then another one is B8M. So that's the rocket launcher I was talking about. As you can see, we have the nose cone promoted as a single piece part, which is really great. And once you combine these two sections together, you should get a nice result. So there are nothing else to add. But again, that's not all. We get another um, portion of tiny sprues with the external equipment. So this kit is quite generous on the additional items because obviously you will not use all of this, um, let's say, weapons on the same aircraft, so definitely something will go into your spare parts. For example, here we get the S24, and also there is a bigger sprue with another rocket launcher. This one is B13L. So again, it's a matter of combining these two halves together and then installing the front uh, or nose and tail sections. Okay, so that's for the plastic sprues, then we get something interesting. So the, uh, I guess that's the another fuselage part, but as you can see, it is packed into a separate cardboard box. And this is really good packaging because even today, some manufacturers managed to include the parts in such a way that they arrive damaged to you. So here we have completely different story. And this is quite important because we get the top fuselage half. This is quite tender thing because here we get the um, also the cockpit section and also some thin elements as well. So as you can see, this angle is also preserved here and inside you can see also some guiding elements. These are actually quite large pins, so it will be difficult to miss them. And I will just give you a few seconds in order to check the external features on this aircraft, but they look really good. And the only thing I'm not sure about is, as I said, about the overall uh, geometry of this fuselage. Because I know there were some complaints from some others on the previously available kits. So who knows, maybe here there is also something wrong. But overall it looks like a decent MiG-29 copy. Okay, now we remove this fuselage part. And then we continue with the clear parts. So here, of course, we get a nice uh, molding quality. These parts were actually packed together with the fuselage. And also they were packed into a separate plastic bag. So that's why they are not scratched. They are not damaged. 
and they should be easy to use. And of course the two piece design allows you to open the cockpit, which is quite important in such a detailed kit so that the features will not be hidden in a closed cockpit. Next you can hear I'm opening another plastic bag, but this one already does not contain any plastic parts. We have a lot of paper stuff here. And to be specific, those are decals. So just give me a moment. Okay, so what do we have here? First of all, we get this nice card. I would say it's a traditional bonus from uh, Great Wall Hobby. As you can see, that's the bo box art image. And here we get also a short list of the features of this aircraft. Very nice bonus, especially if you are into collecting some cards. Next, we continue with the decals. Here I can see that there is no mention where they were printed. It's only written that they were designed by Galaxy model. But here you can see that the overall printing quality looks fine. We also get all the necessary symbols for several markings. And I guess the stencils are coming on the second decal sheet. So here we get all the necessary stencils. Uh, frankly speaking, I did not notice the um, decals for the cockpit. So just give me a second, I will try to recheck the uh, first decal sheet. And still I do not see any decals for the cockpit, which is rather strange. And it also means that you have to get some aftermarket P in case you would like to get a decent cockpit in your model. Next we continue with the marking guide. So here we get three markings actually. So First one is coming from Oryovka Air Base. At least it's written here, quite an interesting naming. I will zoom out a bit, so now you can see what I'm talking about. I think this aircraft was also on the box art. And here we continue with another one from DDR. And here another one from Czechoslovakia Air Forces from 1993. Okay, and next, of course, the Oh, so we have one more marking guide. It was on the bottom between uh, with the assembly menu in between. So we have three more marking options. Here we have the Syrian Air Forces. Then if you flip it over here, we get the um, Iranian Air Forces. Quite an interesting camouflage, to be honest. And here we have another one. This one is coming from Yugoslav Air Forces. This is a typical MiG-29 camouflage, in my opinion. But still nice that these markings or manuals or guides, they are printed in color, so it will give you a better understanding on how to replicate the overall camouflage on your aircraft. So next, as I said, we have the assembly manual. Again, the same box art or the cover as on the box art. Another one here, quite an interesting thing. I wonder why it was done like this. But here we get the parts map and then we start assembly, obviously it starts with the cockpit and here you can see, well, it shows that these dials are supplied as a decals. I guess they were separate, that's why it was uh, difficult to notice them on the decal sheet. So you also have to drill the original fuselage parts, so be sure to not to skip those steps because it will be quite important for the overall installation. Here we continue with air intakes assembly, so you can see that you can also assemble or choose between several parts. You can open slates or close slates. Next we continue with the installation of those things onto the fuselage. As you remember, there are one-piece parts, so it means it should be easier to install. We continue by joining the fuselage halves together. Here we install the uh, fuel tank under fuselage in between air intakes. Then we start working on the landing gear, which is quite detailed here out of the box. And then we proceed with landing gear doors. So from what I can see here, you can assemble the in-flight or uh, the retracted landing gear positions, which is really cool. You get it out of the box. It is considered in the assembly manual. Then we have also the ailerons assembly and I can see that the 
nose cone will have to be detailed with a tube also we can open the canopy as you remember then we have a separate assembly manual for the external equipment and armament loadout scheme the stencils application and marking guide for all of these weapons <laughs> it's on several pages actually then we have stenciling guide for the aircraft itself as you remember the marking guides were printed separately that's why we get the stenciling here and also another page of the parts map and of course the paints chart on the last page so in my opinion this is quite impressive 170 second scale release and i think there are no rivals on the market and it might sound a bit uh, let's say too much but it is like it is in reality on the market and the only closer alternative is the trumpeter but it offers a slightly wrong shape and maybe less details out of the box so it will be your choice but of course i will be happy to hear your opinion here in the comment section below if you like this video and you would like to support us press the like button and subscribe to our youtube channel and i will see you in the next video review as usual thank you for joining me today and bye